That's a sound no rider ever wants to hear. If you watch all of this video, hopefully the knowledge I will give you will reduce the chances of it happening to you. To help you decide which battery type is best for your bike, let's look at all the different things which will affect your choice one by one. Firstly, the cost. And the cost is in direct relation to their life expectancy. A conventional flooded lead acid battery is your cheapest option, but it also has the shortest life expectancy. An AGM lead acid battery is more expensive, but it will last longer. A gel lead acid battery is more expensive again, but it will last you even longer. While a lithium ion battery is by far the most expensive, but it will last the longest. If you live in a temperate climate, and by that I mean where the temperature is usually between 0 and 25 degrees Celsius, any type of battery will get the job done. If you live in a cold climate where the temperature is often below freezing, conventional and gel batteries are no good. An AGM battery is OK, but lithium batteries are the best choice. However, they tend to go dormant at freezing temperatures and will require waking up. Do this by leaving the ignition and the lights on for a couple of minutes to warm the battery before pressing the starter button. If you live in a hot climate where the temperature is often above 25 degrees Celsius, conventional batteries are no good at all. AGM batteries are alright, gel will perform even better, while lithium, again, is your very best choice. In fact, lithium batteries remain stable until the temperature exceeds 50 degrees Celsius or 122 degrees Fahrenheit. If your bike vibrates a lot like this one does, a conventional battery won't last at all. AGM are OK, while gel and lithium resist the vibrations the absolute best. If you ride off-road where the chances of dropping your bike are high, and because a conventional battery is not sealed, the chances of an acid spill are very real. AGM batteries are OK, unless you crack the case, while with gel and lithium batteries there is no risk of acid spill at all. If you don't ride your bike regularly and it remains unused for long periods and your bike doesn't run a lot of electronics, which will discharge the battery, AGM batteries will perform better than a conventional battery. Gel batteries will perform better than AGM, while lithium again is your best choice. In fact, lithium batteries may only need a charge once every six months. This is the one area where a lithium battery performs the absolute worst. If your bike sits idle, but you have electronics such as alarms running off your battery draining it, all three types of lead acid batteries will significantly last longer than a lithium battery. Of course, if you use a battery tender, this won't matter at all. I'll talk more about charges near the end of this video. Gel, lithium and AGM factory activated or AGM ready are all maintenance free, sealed and charged at the factory and can be put straight into service in your bike. When you purchase a conventional flooded battery or an AGM bottle supplied battery, they will be dry and come with a separate electrolyte pack which you will need to put into the battery. After the electrolyte has been added, these batteries must be charged before you put the battery into service. Just follow the instructions from the manufacturer for your battery type, as they will be different. This very first charge is the most important charge of a battery's life. If you don't charge to 100% before use, it will never ever work to its full capacity. The AGM bottle supplied battery will be sealed afterwards and maintenance free while the conventional battery will have a vent tube installed and will require to be checked once a month. If the battery level is low, you will need to top it up with distilled water. And just to be clear, rainwater is not distilled water. Distilled water is just that, distilled, to remove the impurities. You can either buy some or distill your own. When installing a battery, conventional flooded batteries must be kept upright. AGM and gel batteries are best kept upright but may be installed on angles just not on the shorter side of the case, while lithium batteries can be installed on any angle, even upside down. In summary, each battery type has its advantages and its disadvantages. A conventional flooded lead acid battery is the cheapest. If you have a road bike, which doesn't vibrate much, is ridden regularly and on good roads, you live in a temperate climate and your battery is easy to access, they will get the job done. An AGM battery is best for road bikes and where the temperature only occasionally exceeds 0 degrees Celsius or 25 degrees Celsius. It's still the best battery to use for all large touring bikes, or any bike for that matter, that has a lot of electronics and where weight is not an issue. A gel battery is a very good battery if you live in a warmer climate and is especially suitable for Harleys, dirt bikes and adventure bikes because they withstand a lot of vibration. A lithium battery is great in any motorcycle, 
if you can afford one. They are the best battery for extreme climates, whether it's hot or cold. The best battery to use for track bikes and custom bikes due to their low weight and small size, which means they can be placed anywhere, even upside down. They are an excellent choice for people who own quite a few bikes, as you won't need to trickle charge them as long as the bike gets ridden every few months. But, and this is a big but. If you're thinking of changing from a lead acid battery to a lithium battery, and most motorcycles built since 1980 will run one, it's essential to check that your bike's charging system is suitable. Multimeters may look a little bit intimidating, but testing your bike's voltage is very simple. To test your bike's charging voltage, set the multimeter to 20V DC, then connect it to the positive and negative terminals of the battery. Start the engine and rev it to about 3 or 4,000 RPM. The multimeter will indicate the voltage being put out by your alternator. An ideal charging range is between 13.8 volts to 14.4 volts, but down to 13.2 volts and up to 14.6 volts is acceptable. If your bike produces less than 13 volts, a lithium battery won't even charge. And if it's over 14.4 volts, it will fry it. If your bike's charging over 14.6 volts or below 13 volts, it means that you have a problem that is going to damage whatever battery type you are currently using. Ideally, to test the battery itself, wait around 12 hours after the bike has been parked, then with the ignition off, connect the multimeter to the battery. Generally speaking, a healthy 12 volt lead acid battery should give a reading between 12.5 to 12.9 volts, while a lithium should be between 13.2 to 13.7 volts. But wait, there's more. Battery chargers. You must use a battery charger that is designed for your specific battery type, as they all require specific charging routines and voltages. To charge a newly activated conventional or bottle supplied AGM battery, you have to use a standard battery charger which will supply a constant current. A trickle charger will not deliver a high enough initial charge so you will never get the battery to its full capacity. A typical motorcycle battery is between 5 and 20 amps. As a guide, charge at a constant rate of 10% of the battery's capacity. A 15 amp battery should be charged at 1.5 amps and so on. Remember, a conventional battery will vent out substantial quantities of flammable hydrogen gas. Any spilled acid should be washed off with water and baking soda solution to neutralise the acid. The simplest way to test when the battery is fully charged is with a multimeter. Overcharging any battery will cause permanent damage. A trickle float charger will top up your battery to 100%, then cease charging and remain on standby until the battery discharges to a set level when it will once again resume charging. The problem with trickle charges is they don't actually test to see if the battery is holding charge. You could get on your bike and go for a ride, then park it for a few hours, only to return to find out you have a dead battery. A smart battery charger, such as an Optimate, is the very best battery tender to use, as during the float stage, they check to see if the battery is actually holding charge, so you will never get caught out. The Optimate 4's CAN bus edition will also allow charging through a BMW or Ducati motorcycle's CAN bus controlled 12 volt accessory socket, which is a real bonus. So there you have it. Hopefully the information that I've given you will help you decide which battery type is best for your bike. Cheers.